G'day, I'm Paul. Do you want to hear one of the coolest car names ever? GWM Tank. I think it gives you an impression of what they're hoping to do with this thing. It is the Great Wall Motors GWM Tank 300. So it is designed for off-roading. It has a stack of standard off-road features. And um, today we're going to see exactly what it's like to drive on-road and off-road. This competes with things like the Mitsubishi Pajero Sport, the Isuzu MUX, the Jeep Wrangler. Very much ladder frame chassis based on a use off-road type vibes. And it's actually pretty affordable as well. So priced at just under 51 thousand dollars for this one here which is the top spec ultra version in petrol trim if that's too expensive the entire range kicks off at uh, just under forty seven thousand dollars for the luxe version so pretty affordable there so like i said today we're going to do a detailed review plus a little bit of off-roading if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review you can use the time codes on the screen or if you're on youtube you can scroll down and use the chapters below and if you haven't done so already subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive a tank Okay, let's talk exterior design. So you've got five colors to pick from. All but gray is gonna cost you $595. This color is very orange. Uh, I don't know that I would go this color because it looks kind of <laughs> not very nice, but um, there are other colors to choose from, which is good news. Now on the design front, just look at it. It is like a box on wheels. It, it is really interesting. It's quite imposing when you see it here in person. It just, you know, it turns a lot of heads. You've got these flat surfaces, just bold drop-offs here, and a big grill up the front here with piano black in there. This is the, uh, I guess, the branding they're putting on Tank. So overseas, Tank is actually its own name, I guess, but here in Australia, they're sitting it under GWM so that it all sort of falls under that tree. LED headlights, uh, really quite powerful, but there is a downside to these. It's linked to the start-stop system. When the car switches off and then on again, the headlights, like briefly switch off and on so you end up sort of flashing people constantly as the car runs through its stop start cycle so i don't know how they didn't pick that up during the engineering process and, and hopefully it's an easy software fix but yeah it can be a little bit frustrating you've got underbody protection under here plus a recovery point here here's worth pointing out a lot of other vehicles in this segment actually have dual recovery points at the front there this has just the one um, so if you are going to be doing a lot of off-roading, it could be worth looking at an aftermarket option. And just talking about aftermarket options as well, I think the aftermarket is going to go bananas on this because it is designed for off-roading and companies like ARB that are doing a lot of off-roading equipment for things like the Ford Ranger and other vehicles just have a lot of work to run with here. So uh, whip around to the side. Around here, you've got a set of 18 inch alloy wheels and it's quite a chubby profile tire there. So 60 profile tire. Now this is interesting because typically with Chinese cars, when they do land in Australia, they have um, fairly foreign tires that we haven't really heard of. This is actually using a set of Michelins, which is um, decent on the tire front because it should mean that it actually has enough traction to go around corners. Sometimes we find with those Chinese branded tires that they aren't really tuned for, for sportier driving. And obviously this isn't a sports car, but it's just one of those things uh, that I'm glad they actually are thinking about. Design's pretty straightforward. Machine finish on the outside there and a graphite finish on the inside. Up the top here, you've got some cladding there for the wheel arches. You can clearly see the suspension set up. So even though this shares a very similar platform to the GWM Ute, sits on a ladder frame chassis. It doesn't use leaf spring suspension, so it's a coil sprung setup. And it should mean that it actually rides okay on the road. Along the side here, you've got a set of side steps. These look pretty cheap, if I'm honest, sort of made of plastic and you know, they actually do feel quite sturdy and, and don't sort of flex as much as you do find on something like the new Amarok, but would have been nice to see perhaps some metal here or just something a bit more interesting than just a plastic finish there. These wing mirrors actually remind me, what do they remind me of? Um, oh, that's right, on the Gladiator, they kind of have a similar shape there. So indicator built into there. You also have a camera there for the 360 camera. You have a set of roof rails up the top here. These feel really nice and sturdy, so they're not like a plastic setup. They're quite quite nice. Um, this is plastic though, so it doesn't match body color. Kind of suits the appearance. Normally it, it does sort of cheapen a vehicle, but I think here it actually doesn't look too bad. Privacy glass. Around the back here, you have a set of disc brakes. And again, lots of clearance there within the wheel arches. I'll be keen to see how much articulation this has when we do a bit of light off-roading later on. Uh, come around to the back with me. That theme continues with those big plastic bumpers. Full LED tail lights, you have a 300 there. Uh, there is actually a 500, a bigger version of the tank that is coming. 
Uh, it's also available in a plug-in hybrid as well. This is also available in a hybrid too. This one is just the uh, sort of entry-level petrol option. Over here you have GWM tank and then you've got a handle there to open the tailgate. When we have a look at the boot, I'll show you how that works. Um, spare tire on the back here, you've got a wiper there, shark fin aerial and a brake light built into there as well. Let me know what you think about the design of the GWM tank. Do you reckon it looks cool? I kind of like it. So let me know what you reckon in the comment section below. Okay, so we are inside the tank. This is what the key looks like. You've got panic, lock, boot, unlock. Then on the back, you have that tank logo. It's actually quite a cool key. It's got like a rubber finish on it and uh, it's very small and compact, which is great. It's a proximity sensing key, so you can leave that in your pocket. Grab the door handle and then you have a push button start just in here. Um, I was actually really surprised by this. To be honest, I hadn't done much sort of research and, and looked at images of the interior, but when I picked this up from work, I'm like, oh, this looks unreal. You've got these two enormous screens ahead of you. Really is quite a premium looking interior, and I think they've done a great job to make you feel like you're spending mega dollars here without actually having to spend mega dollars. Although some of this is very reminiscent of Mercedes-Benz. These air vents look almost identical to the ones that Mercedes-Benz use in the G-Class, but outside of that, the rest is um, quite sort of uh, nicely presented. In terms of the surfaces, uh, they are all quite soft to the touch. How soft are they? Well, we've got our durometer, tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you want to see how this car compares to others that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description below. Now, what about build quality? So, tiny bit wonky there in the center. It doesn't feel too bad, and this is what the door sounds like. Okay, let's talk infotainment. So you have two 12.3 inch displays, uh, one for the infotainment, one for the driver controls. I ran you through both of them. Uh, only the infotainment is a touchscreen and it's only driven by the touchscreen. There's no sort of central controller here. It's a pretty straightforward system. So you have your home screen here with radio, uh, audio, climate controls, and then uh, seat functions along with car information. There is no inbuilt satellite navigation. That's all done through smartphone mirroring, but you do have the ability to look at shortcuts like these sections up the top here. And then you can set and customize those as well as you like, which I think is a pretty, uh, pretty cool function. And then if you jump over here to the menu, you'll see the rest of the standard controls, including this. Ah, so you can put media in here as well, which is fun. You can look at pictures of your kids and other random things. Um, it also has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I'll show you what Apple CarPlay looks like. Full screen integration, that is really nice. Pretty sort of quick there as well. Keep in mind that both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are both wired, so no wireless, unfortunately. And this is what Android Auto looks like. So yeah, full screen integration again, nice and quick too. Uh, on the radio front, you have AM, FM radio, no DAB radio here. You do get DAB radio on the hybrid, strangely, uh, but it is all plumbed through a nine speaker Infinity branded sound system. Overhead of the driver here, you have a display that gives you all your sort of basic information. But in addition to that, you can also then customize each side of that screen, run through your different settings. So there is a fair bit of sort of customization available there for the driver. Okay, let's chat safety. So you have autonomous emergency braking. You have a lane departure warning with a lane keeping assistant. You've got blind spot monitoring built into the wing mirror over there, auto dimming rear vision mirror. You have rear cross traffic alert. You have both front and rear parking sensors. You have a 360 camera and this is what that looks like. Wow, quality of that is excellent. So you can clearly see out the back of the vehicle there. See what it says on the suitcase. That's a 360 view. Um, it is a little bit distorted around the edges there, but the clarity around there is probably one of the better ones that we've seen. Also gives you distances in centimeters between you and the object behind you, which is great. You can then go to a 3D mode as well to see what's sort of going on around the car. Whip around there if you want to. You can then zoom in to these sections too if you need to. Uh, it really is quite a decent setup there. I'm surprised by how good this is. So uh, very impressed with that. And this is what the horn sounds like. Now let's chat practicality and we'll start off with your connectivity. So you've got USB-A port, USB-C port. There's a USB-A port up here for your dash cam. 12 volt down here. You have a wireless phone charger just there. In terms of storing your phone, you can slap it down on the wireless charger. You've got plenty of storage around here, which is fantastic. Now, 
One thing I think they probably didn't really get right, and I'm a little bit disappointed by, is I thought just here under the um, the air vent it was actually a cup holder, but it's like a little coin tray. So I think they missed an opportunity to put cup holders there because when you try and stick your coffee down here, it is a really long way down. So it's kind of awkward and clumsy to get your coffee out again while you're driving. So. I just don't think that's great placement of those cup holders and they're just far too low for that. But um, anyway, uh, in terms of your bottle though, it fits nicely into there. There's teeth in there as well. It's inside the door too. Try our big bottle as well. Oh no, big bottle doesn't fit inside the door. That's a shame. Anyway, uh, other storage, you've got a little slot here as well above the not cup holder slot. You've got a really decent sized center console there as well with a tray that slides forwards and backwards. And I think there's an air conditioning vent there as well, which is great. You've got a glove box down here, which is reasonably sized, little grab handle there. And then finally you have a sunglasses holder up the top. Now let's talk about some of your comfort features. Some of this stuff just blows me away for the price because you're getting dual zone automatic climate control. You have heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel. They really have sort of just thrown everything at this in terms of features, which is great. You have electric seat adjustment for the driver and front passenger. You also have a massage function for the driver's seat as well. Seats are actually pretty comfy. So I spent a fair bit of time driving this uh, to get here this morning and felt sort of great. Uh, no dramas there. Steering offers both tilt and reach adjustment. I just wish it offered a bit more reach adjustment because uh, I could do with just a little bit more on that, um, but we'll see how it goes once we do actually go for a bit of a drive around the track here but um yeah all, all that stuff's really great and then just on our reach test um all of this stuff is easy to reach while you're driving okay so second row of the tank it's actually a fair bit of room here so my driver's seat is pretty far back and you can see i got stacks of knee room toe room is great and headroom is excellent too there's a few creature comforts back here so you've got mat pockets you have air vents you've also got two usb a outlets under these little Hidey holes, a little storage nook just down there. Center armrest here with uh, two cup holders. So your bottle fits in there nicely with those rubber teeth. Bottle can then fit inside the door without any dramas as well. You've got three top tether points along with two isofix points. Grab handle as well if you are in the back seat when there is off-roading going on. Now window test, so it is manual down, manual up, but it goes all the way down, which is good news. Okay, let's talk cargo space. So similar to the Prado, you have a door that swings open like this. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that simply because it means that if you are parked up against a wall, you need to leave yourself sufficient distance. So you're gonna be basically this far away from the wall if you do need to open this. So not a great setup, but um, I guess it's one of those compromises that you have to make somewhere. Uh, and that reveals this, which is 400 liters of cargo space. Also not very impressive when you look at the other competitors in this segment. It's quite a narrow entry point, very high off the ground there. And then even beneath the cargo floor, you've got no room to store anything really. You've got the subwoofer there, jack, and, and that's about it. So. Um, yeah, I think they could have done a little bit better there on the storage, but on the upside, you do have stacks of hooks around the place here, a little bit of netting off to the side there, and then also a power outlet that gives you 120 watt AC plug as well, which is great. So if you do want to expand the space, so you can drop that second row. I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. I'm going to pop the bags in there first, give you an idea of how much room there is. It's actually, I wonder if that'll actually close if we have the bag in that way. Yeah, it does, which is great. And then that second row as well, show you what that looks like. So there you go, it does help with space because it is a flat floor. So I guess there is that benefit, but um, yeah, I think they could have done just a little bit more with the space they had available here. Okay, we've just hit the road in the tank. I don't think I'm ever gonna get sick of that name. It sounds great. Um, so what is powering this? So I mentioned earlier, there is a hybrid and there is also a turbo petrol. This one is the turbo petrol, two litre turbocharged, four cylinder petrol engine, makes 162 kilowatts of power and 380 Newton meters of torque. And that's all mated to an eight speed automatic transmission. Now, what does all that feel like behind the wheel? Keeping in mind, this weighs around 2.1 tons. Give it a little sink in there. Yeah, look, it's not going to absolutely blow you away, but it is uh, certainly adequate performance. Have a think about how this compares to its peers though. So you've got stuff like Everest, Prado, 500 Newton meters of torque a piece there. So they are going to feel considerably punchier, but this has the advantage of being a petrol. So you've got a wider torque band to work with and it will feel far more responsive most of the time. But 
keep in mind as well, it is like half the price of a Prado Kakadu. Now, GWM claims a combined fuel economy of just under 10 litres per 100 Ks. We are currently sitting on 11.8. And I'm actually quite happy with that figure because this car is pretty much brand new. 660 Ks had only a handful of kilometres on it when we picked it up. Done highway driving and then some faster driving here earlier today. And I think that fuel economy figure is pretty impressive when you consider the size of this vehicle and the four-cylinder turbo engine that's uh, sort of powering everything. Okay, sine wave time. Let's jack the speed up to 130. So we do this at 130 because that is the maximum speed limit in Australia and it's what you're going to encounter if you're overtaking or doing anything faster on a country road and it gives us a good indication of what body control is like. Got to keep in mind as well that this is quite a uh, quite a big vehicle and quite softly sprung. So Let's see how this goes here. Ooh, yeah, okay, that's <laughs> very floaty. Yeah, we hit uh, bump stops there on the way down. Um, yeah, I kind of was expecting that. It's hard to find a good compromise of these vehicles because you either build it so it's excellent for off-road driving or you build it so that it's great for on-road driving. And if you pick a spot in the middle, you're gonna compromise one of those things. And I think they've gone down the path of making this better for off-road driving as opposed to on-road driving in that respect. Okay, time to hit. The worst road in Australia. This is our corrugated road. 90 k's an hour we do this and we have a condensed sine wave here as well. Yeah, this is where it's really excelling. I'm ploughing over this stuff at the moment and it is so nice and comfortable inside the cabin. It's very softly sprung and it's soaking everything up nicely. This is our condensed sine wave. Really shakes the absolute living daylights out of the car. It's doing a nice job here powering along over this stuff. So yeah, very impressive ride compliance on this choppy stuff. Okay, so you have a stack of drive modes to work with here. Most of them are off-road focused. So I'm gonna to go to the one that's on-road focused. It's called expert mode. So you press this, it gives you a warning and then it allows you to configure all the settings. So I'll pop that into sport, steering into sport and switch traction control into traction off. There you go, that immediately becomes raspy. Let's go for a quick spin around our track here. Oh, this has a lot of body roll and traction control is just biting constantly there in the background. So I'm going to switch all of that off for the moment. Yeah, look, it does have a lot of body roll, but what I'm noticing here is it actually reaches that body roll limit and then it just settles in there and it's all fairly predictable. Even on this faster section here, it is motoring along really nicely. Brakes feel nice and responsive too. And look, the steering has enough weight to it. It is a little vague there in the comfort setting, but here in the sport setting, it sort of adds the weight that you need to it. It's actually performing pretty well for a, I love it how it does that. It just goes into like it's panic mode when you're on the brakes hard and you hit a bump. Um, but yeah, it is actually surprisingly not bad. I was not expecting it to be this sporty. It is a big vehicle. It has a lot of body roll, but ultimately it all feels really in check and it is nice and punchy on the back straight here. It is absolutely hauling. So there you go. Look, it's not the last word on uh, sort of sporty handling, but it is actually way better than I thought it was going to be. Okay, pop this back into its uh, normal mode. Um, what is what is this like to drive day to day? Um, well, look, in terms of road noise, it is a little bit noisy. You get some tyre noise coming into the cabin, especially at highway speeds. And it's, it's not so much the tyre noise, it's actually the wind noise that you get over these mirrors. That's where I think most of it's coming from. It's not the end of the world, but it is something you definitely notice, especially as the wind picks up. Now, what's visibility like? Well, I can see clearly down the front there because that bonnet sort of goes all the way to the edge and it's quite sort of squared off and boxy. But you do have the access to this 360 camera, the front and rear parking sensors. The wing mirrors are nice and big as well. You've got those blind spot monitors built into there too. Okay, time to do a little bit of testing of these uh, lane support systems. On the way here, I actually found it highly intrusive and quite annoying. So uh, let's see if I can sort of replicate some of that. It's actually the emergency lane keeping function that I found most annoying because you get near the line. In fact, not even sort of over the line or anything. And it just keeps coming up with messages about how you're crossing the line and, and it just violently sort of shunts you back over. It's like right now you can see it's, <laughs> it's just randomly like, I don't even know what it's doing now. Like, I've, you can see here on that camera that it's just randomly steering left and right. Um, so, yeah, it, it's a really weird setup. So, uh, I'll pop the cruise control on just so we can actually see how this goes. Set the cruise control to 70 k's an hour. Okay, so that's set. Uh, the steering wheel has gone green. So, I'm just going to 
lightly let go of that. Look, look at the steering wheel. I really don't understand what's going on here. It is just really shunting at it constantly. It's not smooth in any way. And this is in our first lane. We're actually testing this lane and the two outer lanes to simulate you know, a situation where it needs to steer a bit more. And even in this first lane, it's a bit funny. So I'll move over to the next lane. Let's see what it's like there. I'll wait for that to lock on. So it's just gone green. So there it goes again. It's just it's just veering all over the road here for some reason. Uh, and we'll jump over to the next lane up. We'll see if that locks on. So it's got, uh, there we go, it's got the lines active. No, it hasn't. No, it's not gonna lock on here at all in this lane. But um, yeah, it's, it's just really, I don't know, it probably just needs a bit more calibration because at the moment it, yeah, like I said, when I was driving here this morning, I switched it off because it was getting really annoying and it was quite violent in the way that it was doing stuff. So yeah, I think that definitely needs just a little bit more work because it's not quite there yet. Okay, time to do some performance testing. Before we jump into that though, Car Expert is more than just a YouTube channel. We're actually a really big website. Uh, we have like 50 full-time staff here in Australia. We also have a network of dealers that we deal with that will get you the best deal on in-stock vehicles. So if you are in the market for a new car like the Tank 300, all you have to do is go to Google and type in Help Me Car Expert. That'll take you to a page that explains everything about how we can get you a deal on your new car. There is no official uh, zero to 100 time. We're gonna put it back into expert mode. We'll switch off all the nannies and stuff like that. Um, and then we'll go through to 120 and see how we go. I'm really interested to see how quick this is. So here it is. It's not too bad off the line there. All right. There's 80, 100. 120, all right, we'll bring this up to a stop and have a look at our acceleration time. So, zero to 100, 8.95 seconds. It's actually not that bad. Uh, and then 80 to 120 in 6.97 seconds. You can see it really slows down there once you get up and move. It sort of runs out a little bit of puff there. Uh, but let's go back and do a break from 100. I'm genuinely curious to see how quickly this will pull up. Okay, let's get up to 100. Here we go. Slam down the anchors, see what it feels like. There's 100. Oh, gee, it really dives. Actually, felt to me like the rear wheels left the ground there as it was finding itself. We'll have to look back at the footage to see if that was the case, but wow, it sort of just really nosedived. So, all right, let's see uh, what that deceleration time was. So, three seconds and 42.09 meters. So, it's about on par with the other vehicles in this segment. It's not amazing, but it's not great either. Uh, and yeah, I'd be interested to see the replay. Now, if you do want to see how this vehicle compares to others that we've tested before, scroll down to the link in the description below. That'll uh, give you a table that we're sort of building at the moment. And if you want to know which app we're using to do all this performance testing, lift a, a pinned comment in the comment section below that gives you all the details. And now our reverse acceleration test. Let's see how we go. Oh, okay, 39 kilometers an hour. Okay, so it is time to do a little bit of light off-roading and I'll run you through the four-wheel drive specs first. So this is a full-time two-wheel drive, so it means it is rear-wheel drive most of the time. It has four-wheel drive high range, but you can only use that on unsealed surfaces. Then you have four-wheel drive low range. There are a bunch of drive modes here as well, but they only work in low range. You have a rear diff lock that works in two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, and four-wheel drive low range. You have a front diff lock as well, which is pretty cool. That only works in low range. You have the tank turn function, so that works in low range only, and then you have a crawl assist function as well that's for low range. There is also like a snow driving mode that works uh, regardless of which sort of drive mode that you're in. So, um, can you give this a bit of a crack and see how it goes? In terms of the actual four-wheel drive specs, you have an approach angle of 33 degrees and a departure angle of 34 degrees. Ground clearance of 224 mil, and then I mentioned earlier that underbody protection as well, just to be on the safe side. So. What we're going to do first is we're going to test the traction control system across our offset mogul. We're going to get into a situation where the rear wheel is off the ground and that is going to force the traction control system to act to allow the car to move. So see how well that works. Uh, so we'll line this up just here. Wait for that wheel to get off the ground, which is just 
just there, so it's teetering a little bit at the moment, so I'll roll onto the throttle. I can hear the traction control working there. It's trying to bite gradually. There we go, so it's not doing an amazing job, so it is basically thinking that it's just doing normal driving at the moment. So what I'll do, I'll just lock the rear diff. That's locked now, and I'll just roll onto the throttle. Look at that, walks over straight away. So, yeah, look, the traction control system doesn't know that it's in four-wheel drive mode, and that is one of the downsides to these uh, not having a four-wheel drive or just an off-road mode when you are in just normal driving. So uh, there's probably something they can work on, but I love the fact that you can turn the rear diff lock on immediately and just go for it. Time to go back in the opposite direction. This is normally where I would put it into four-wheel drive high range. So that is engaging now. Nice and quick there as well. So that's switched off stability control and the forward collision warning. So it's now basically splitting torque between the front and rear axle. It's a 50-50 split. So, okay, let's line this up. Let's see how it goes. So same story again here. We're going to be lifting uh, wheel off the ground there and that's going to cause traction to be at a premium just here. So I'll roll onto the throttle now. We'll see how well the system deals with that. That's flicking up a bunch of water onto our GoPro at the back there at the moment. I'm going to roll onto the throttle a bit more. Traction control is doing something there. I'll roll more onto that. It's interesting, I can feel it gradually giving us a little bit more wheel slip there, but uh, even with almost full throttle here, it's actually not moving through at all. So what I'm going to have to do now to get out of this is lock the rear diff. So I'll push that. It engages that rear diff lock, and I should just be able to roll onto the throttle now. There it is. So it kicks a little bit sideways there, but um, kind of just does the job. So again, let down a little bit there by the traction controls. Uh, they were probably the, the nannies that were biting there, but once more, you can just lock that rear diff, and, and it sort of does everything for you. Okay, now it is time to climb our hill, and this is where we get to test low range a little bit as well. So um, basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up at gradual throttle first. So we'll see if it'll get up there on its own. And then what I'll do is come back again and try coming to a stop on the way up and then applying throttle just to see how well it handles that type of scenario. But low range, you pop it into neutral, slide that across to four wheel drive low range. I can feel it engaging just there. So that's now on. Uh, let's have a little look here at some of these drive modes. So if I put that back into drive, so we have uh, mud and sand, we have rock, we have mountain, designed for a bumpy and slippery conditions of mountains, hills and mud surfaces. I reckon that's probably the goer for this one. And then pothole, uh, designed for cross axle situations. Nice. Okay, so I'll put it into mountain mode. We'll see what that does. I've left the rear diff and the front diff unlocked at the moment. So we'll see if it'll get up. If it doesn't, I'll, I'll give it another crack with those locked. So here we go. Gradual throttle. Let's see how this goes. They've just resurfaced this. So I'm thinking it probably won't be too bad. Nice, nice, that is very impressive. I think this is showing us, uh, and we've seen this before with a couple of different vehicles, that when traction controls are involved, often they'll impede the flow of things moving because they're just trying to control everything. But when you just leave it to its own devices, it just really just does its own thing there. And that was with rear diff, front diff uh, unlocked. So that's pretty impressive. All right, we will go through our mud bog and try a hill descent now as well. Okay, so let's try crawl control. You press that to activate it. You can see it coming up there. And uh, we'll just see what happens as we come over this crest. That's cool. So it's telling you you can adjust the speed. And then this camera is also giving me an indication of where, where we're going. That's awesome. So that's controlling speed really nicely there. Very impressed with that. The amount of features this car has is ridiculous. So. That is cool. All right, uh, we've got another little mud bog here. So let's plow through this and we'll head back one more time to try our hill. Okay, this time around, let's go the whole hog. Let's lock the front and rear diffs and I'll come to a stop going up there. So that's rear diff locked, front diff locked. It activates so quickly, really impressive that. Keep in mind with the front and rear diff locked, it's going to affect your turning circle. And there's a feature for that as well. I'll show you in just a sec, but let's climb up here and I'll come to a stop about here. And then I'll just roll onto the throttle and we'll see how it goes. It's got hill holding, which is good, so. Nice, 
nice. <laughs> yeah, this thing is a beast. I'm really looking forward to seeing what people can end up doing with this when it comes to modifying them because I reckon this is going to be pretty fun with a stack of aftermarket accessories. Okay, let's attack some rocks. So I'm going to put this over into rock mode. What does that do? So it locks the rear diff. We'll see how it goes over here. It should actually do okay given how soft the suspension is. So we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna ride the uh, brake with the throttle just to have a bit more control over pace. Yeah, this is super comfortable so far. No touchdowns yet, which is good news. I think it's got enough clearance there to, to get over this stuff without any issues. And then we have that uh, underbody protection too. It's actually really good. It is just getting over this without any dramas at all. And it is really nice and comfortable too. And that rock mode gives you a different throttle feel as well, which is, uh, which is nice. So you're actually getting a bit more control over that as you glide over those. Wow, okay, very impressed with that. Okay, time to go through some water. So 700 millimeter wading depth. So the river is pretty high today. Uh, it's at 650, so we're right at the limit of this. Okay, here we go. We'll drop it in and see how it feels. Now oh, that's annoying, those parking sensors. All right, we'll crawl through here. <laughs> you can hear the water lapping at the bottom there. I'm gonna have to gradually climb out of here. So these parking sensors are annoying. Um, okay, climb out of here. Beautiful. Nice, okay, that is all done. Well, there you go, uh, GWM tank. It's actually pretty awesome off-road. Like, just even just with these standard tyres that aren't really off-road focused, it is doing a commendable job with all of this stuff that we're throwing at it. And I think if you went to town on things like tyres and some aftermarket equipment, this would be an incredibly capable vehicle off-road as well. So that's pretty cool. I think it is let down slightly by the traction controls, but um, ultimately uh, you just go into low range and do it all yourself if you need to. You've got all of the tools here to do what you need to do for a bargain price. So yeah, very impressed with it. Now, this is gonna sound a little bit different because we had to record it later on, but this is what tank turn looks like in the Tank 300. It basically is able to lock individual wheels to tighten the turning circle. Similar function to what we've seen on the 300 series Land Cruiser. And as you can see in this footage, it actually works. So if you are on a trail and you need to turn super tight, you enable this function in low range and it's able to lock that rear wheel to tuck the car in and make it turn really sharply. Okay, so GWM Tank 300. This is significantly better than what I thought it was gonna be. It's great off-road. There is so much technology and standard features inside the cabin. It just shows you how much brands like, uh, I don't know, Toyota as an example, get away with charging like $90,000 for a Prado Kakadu when this has pretty much all of that uh, and more uh, for about half the price. So uh, I think that if you are looking at this as an off-roader that you can potentially modify, I think it is great value for money. I am keen to see what they do with accessories and stuff like that because I think that's going to be the telling tale of whether people dive into this as an off-roader. Uh, now what about as a daily? Uh, look I think it is pretty let down by the lack of boot space there. I think in this segment if families are going to be buying this you do want a little bit more boot space and there probably isn't quite enough in there. I would like to see things like uh, wireless smartphone mirroring as well down the track there and an improvement on those lane departure things because I thought that was uh, pretty average as well but outside of that uh, this has put a smile on my face so let me know in the comments section below what do you think about this would you buy this over something like an everest or a pajero sport i am keen to see what you think let me know down there if you did enjoy this video please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates and if you haven't done so already subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon but until next time take it easy